Hey Eagles fans, did you know that we have an Eagles only channel here at Chat Sports? All you gotta do is go to youtube.com slash eagles now for all the latest Eagles news and rumors. If you're wondering what that looks like, we're gonna go ahead and play a little sneak peek of that channel for you guys right now. Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mod. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now, and today let's go ahead and break down the latest Eagles news and rumors. A lot of interesting stuff has happened over the past couple of days, starting with the big one, and that is Jason Peters. Could Jason Peters, the bodyguard, the aging bodyguard, be set to come back to Philadelphia? Now, we're going to break all that down here in a second, but I first want to go back to actually move forward and kind of refresh you guys' memory on what happened with Jason Peters. Remember, he's going to be 39 years old in January. The Eagles announced that they were not going to re-sign him, which only ever happens with players that teams respect you know there's a lot of cuts and people you know not going to exercise contracts and they just kind of move on to new different or move on to new football teams whereas some teams if they really like the player if they've done you know great stuff for them Tom Brady and the Patriots Jason Peters and the Eagles the Eagles themselves will release a press release saying hey we love Jason Peters we are grateful for everything he did but we're going to go ahead and let him go that's what the Eagles went ahead and did and now it comes to uh, the, to the, the today where Jason Peters remains a free agent and the latest news comes out saying that he is uh, turning down other offers in order to go ahead and come back to Philadelphia. It sounds like Jason Peters is coming back. It's just a matter of when and not if. Now, it's all broke via w, uh, 94.1 WIP talking the other day saying, quote, there's no rush on Jason Peters' part and there's no rush on the Eagles' part because nobody basically can do anything. Jason Peters, they know what he is, what he's capable of doing. For what I've been told, Peters turned down offers from elsewhere because he wants to stay with the Eagles. The Eagles want him. Now, a couple of things to break down here is there is no rush on these sort of things and you wonder what the rush technically is. It's not the whole quarantine stuff that's left us where we are right now, probably sitting at home, you know, bored. It's probably just the fact that the Eagles have no rush to go ahead and sign him right now because the point of signing him doesn't really do anything because no offseason activities are technically happening. Now, that could be one argument, but the counter argument to that is if you're going to re-sign him, just go ahead and do it now because it's not like he's grandstanding and wanting more money because he's turned down other contracts, meaning he's given the... the uh, has handed the baton to the Eagles and said, hey, it's all the balls in your court. You guys go ahead and sign me for whatever you want. I want to come back to Philadelphia. The concern with Jason Peters is not that he is not a great player. It's not that he's 39 years old. It really is centered on the fact that he's missed a lot of games the past couple of years due to injury. You go back the last four years, he had only played 13 games in 2018, 16 games in 20, er, sorry, 13 games in 2019, 16 games in 2018, 7 in 2017, and 6 in 2016. Now, someone will look at that and go, oh, well, that's not too bad, right? I mean, he only had one season where he missed a significant amount of time, and that's, of course, when he had the, the severe lower leg injury in 2017 when did not be a part of the Eagles a playoff run. Vitae started at left tackle and filled in very, very well. He's no longer an eagle by uh, by by the way but the important part about Jason Peters missing games the last four years is that he'll miss a lot of snaps and not necessarily miss a lot of games there are a lot of times where Jason Peters will hobble off the football field and he'll kind of be on the sideline getting some treatment normally on his lower body to eventually come back later on in the third or fourth quarter and that just messes with the rhythm and the flow and it's tough for a backup tackle to be ready for it that's the concern with Jason Peters and then you go to the depth chart and you go do they really need him? And that's, that's, that's the big question here. Do the Eagles actually need Jason Peters? Obviously, Lane Johnson at right tackle. You would expect Andre Dillard to be the left tackle there. But then T Prince Tega Wanago is presumably the steal the draft for the Eagles. Could he be starting at left tackle sooner rather than later? Uh, obviously, Jordan, the uh, Jordan, I think Maliata is how you pronounce his name. He, of course, was the rugby player who was supposed to be Jason Peters' understudy, and yet here we are, you know, years after the Eagles drafted him late in the NFL draft, and he still has not played significant time. And then Jack Driscoll, kind of that backup, backup type tackle as well. The question remains, and this is a question that all Eagle fans must now answer for themselves, do you need Jason Peters? Now, you can just sit there and say, oh, well, of course, he can mentor the young players and all this stuff. No, if the Eagles re-sign him, he's not going to be a backup tackle. He will be the starting left tackle, at least for week one. And the question is, is that the right move? Is Andre Dillard not ready, or is Dillard technically ready you need to give the reins to your former first round draft pick and having a guy like Jason Peters will just mess things up let me know what you guys think should the Eagles bring back Jason Peters type Y down below in the comments for yes type N down below in the comments for no I want you guys to consider everything I just said right because some people are going to say oh well duh he's a great Eagle but also consider the injury also consider Andre Dillard I want to see what you guys think let me know in the comments section down below
All right, moving on. More news, more Alshon Jeffrey stuff. Are you guys tired of talking about Alshon Jeffrey yet? I am, and yet news keeps coming out. And this one we have got to talk about because it comes from someone who works inside the Eagles and knows a lot inside the Eagles. I'll explain that here in a second. So, of course, the rumors have always said, at least for the past couple of months, and we've reported a ton of them here on Philadelphia Eagles now, that the Eagles are trying to trade Alshon Jeffrey. It was, they're going to trade him before free agency. or the, Oh, no, now they're going to trade him during uh, the NFL draft. And then here we are. He's still a Philadelphia Eagle. He's still recovering from his Liz Frank injury, which might be kind of the whole hold up here. He's got to kind of get healthy and then have a medical checkup and then be clear to play. And then teams would be interested in trading for him. But either way, it was looking like the Eagles would eventually cut him after the July 1st deadline. And yet now, new quotes from inside the Eagles organization show that maybe they want to go ahead and keep him. It's very, very strange. I, you know, let me just go ahead and ask you guys this before I show you guys the quote. Should Jeffrey be an Eagle in 2020? I just want to know, straight up, should Alshon Jeffrey be an Eagle in 2020? Type 1 down below for yes, type 2 down below for no. Make it really easy. 1 or 2, yes or no. Let me see what you guys think in the comment section. Here is the quote, though, that we're all up in arms about in Philadelphia Eagle land. Dave Spadaro, who is essentially the team reporter for the Eagles, but he's much more than that. He's like he's like the inside media guy, the Philadelphia Eagles. Google him, look him up on Twitter. He is, he's been there for a long time. He is as connected inside the Eagles organization probably as anybody in the world. He said, quote, the plan is for Alshon Jeffrey to be a major part of the offense as he recovers from his Liz Frank injury. He has to complete his rehab, of course, and Jeffrey is in is uh, is in the course of doing so. The Eagles have made sure this offseason to get the word out that Jeffrey is being counted on, and Roseman has had conversations to that extent with having number 17 in the picture. A healthy and fully focused and hungry Alshon Jeffrey would be a huge boost to the offense. Okay, you hear that and you go, Okay, wait, that means they're going to keep him after all the reports of trading him. Let me explain the two thoughts here. The first thought is you take it at face value and you go, okay, well, the Eagles want to keep him. They like the idea. They want a established possession receiver, a deep ball receiver, a red zone receiver that Jeffrey's been really good at on the outside because they have a bunch of other speed guys around and not really another big body besides J.J. Ortega Whiteside. You just take that at face value. Or you go, well, maybe they're trying to bluff and pretend like they want to have him. That way they can actually find a trade partner for him because the team goes, oh, the Eagles really want him. Oh, well, now we're not going to trade for him. And the Eagles go, okay, now we can go ahead and actually trade him. So there are two, two trains of thought on all of this. The other one is... Can Alshon Jeffrey stay healthy? You mentioned Jason Peters getting injured. We'll do the kind of the same uh, stat here as well. 2019, Jeffrey only played in 10 games. 2018, only played in 13 games. 2017, the Super Bowl year, he was fantastic. Ergo played all 16 games. And then his final season with the Bears played only 12 games as well. Can you count on Alshon Jeffrey to be there for a longer period of time during the regular season. Now, not as important as I would say Jason Peters' starting role is at left tackle. I'd rather have a left tackle play all 16 games than a wide receiver. But you guys get my point that you look at what Alshon Jeffrey has done the past couple of seasons. The stats have not been great, and the numbers in terms of staying healthy on the field have not been great as well. Plus, the Eagles did add a bunch of new wide receivers. They added Jalen Rager. They signed Marquise Good or They traded for Marquise Goodwin. They drafted John Hightower and Quez Watkins in the later rounds of the draft. And they're very excited about all of these players, and all of them are expected to go ahead and make the roster, pair that with Jackson and J.J. Ortega-Whiteside and Greg Ward and the wide receiver room that was you know, you know, as empty as can be last year is a little bit more crowded. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Alshon Jeffrey. Now, it's interesting to see what happens with our subscribers because we're approaching 10,000 subs, which is a huge deal here on Philadelphia Eagles. Now, remember the channel started, I mean, we started at zero and we've slowly worked our way up in less than a year. We're growing at a crazy rate. We want you to be a part of it. So, if you like the videos, if they keep popping up on your suggested feed, just go ahead and subscribe. That's YouTube's hint to like, hey, we know you like his content, so just go ahead and subscribe. So, scroll down below, click the red subscribe button and the notification bell. We would greatly appreciate it here at Philadelphia Eagles. Now, final little thing here. It's kind of fun, right? I mean, the offseason here, we got to do some fun stuff as well. Where does Doug Peterson rank on the coaching list of the top 32 coaches in the National Football League? Well, Roto World, of course, always ranked. We talked about this last year, I think, in terms of uh, all the stuff here at Chat Sports. Roto World has ranked all 32 head coaches every single season, and they just released their new head coach rankings. And it's very interesting to see where Doug Peterson would land this year because he's been a top 10 coach on the Roto World list since winning the Super Bowl in 2017. So, where does Doug Peterson rank? Well, we'll show you in just one second. Like the video. Let me ask you guys this. You know, I, I like to gauge the audience here, right? Like this video. If you guys think Doug Peterson is a top five coach right now? And as you're liking the video, think about the other coaches that would be there in the top five. Get that, get that mental picture, right? So like the video, mental picture, and here's the list. Doug Peterson comes in at number five. 
uh, behind John Harbaugh of the Baltimore Ravens, Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints, Andy Reid, old big red, he just did win a Super, a Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs, and of course, the greatest coach of all time, Bill Belichick there at number one. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty. I think that's that's pretty accurate to me. Now, there's a little bit of an argument here in terms of John Harbaugh. Harbaugh, of course, it wins a Super Bowl with Joe Flacco. Does a whole bunch of nothing after that. But you got to give credit to Harbaugh for, of course, changing the offense, drafting Lamar Jackson, and being dominant. I mean, the Ravens are always a decent football team. They're very rarely at the bottom of the AFC uh, North. But he you know, had a Doug Peterson. Yeah, I guess we'll let it slide right there. The Sean Payton one is interesting because, really, if you look at it. Doug Peterson has outperformed Sean Payton the past couple of seasons. Now, you take away the loss in the Superdome a couple of years ago in the divisional round, and that could for sure be Doug Peterson ahead of him. But Payton continues to have outstanding talent, and the big difference between the Saints and the Eagles last year, the Saints were healthy, the Eagles weren't, and they couldn't beat the Vikings in the wild card round at home. So, you know, the list is what it is. It's interesting. Here's what Roto World had to actually say about Doug Peterson whenever they, you know, rank him and then write about him saying, quote, Peterson continues to make lemonade out of lemons, which can obscure his continued devotion to cold, hard logic. Even at 9-7, and seven, the Eagles remained one of the league's most efficient offenses last season, as well as one of the most aggressive on fourth down. Peterson knows what he's doing, and it will look even better if his team can just get a little bit healthier with a little better, uh, a little bit better roster. Boy, isn't that the truth in Philadelphia? Just get a little bit healthier, a little bit better roster, and we'll see what Doug Peterson can do. Remember, the Eagles in 2017, Yes, they had injuries to Winston Peters, but the majority of the offense was still there. And Doug Peterson, you know, lemons uh, and the lemonade and won a Super Bowl. So we'll see what happens, obviously, with this season. But I wanted to get you guys the news coming up, especially with uh, Alshon Jeffrey, especially with Jason Peters. And a little fun one there, a little bonus one at the end in terms of Doug Peterson, top five head coach, which I think is pretty accurate and a good job and a, uh, a well done job by Roto World. There you go. All time we have for today on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Thomas Motz signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.